Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So in this episode, obviously, we're continuing with the whole fear dimension thing, which at first there was a whole astronaut thing, and I didn't really think much of it. I was like, mm, well, who's fear as an astronaut? And then it clicked in my house. I was like, right! Uh, wasn't his name Will? The dude from season three, the planet that Jim was on, was like, that, um, Hive came from. I was like, right, 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 right. Because that was, you know, because it was that thing pretending to be um, Will, even though Will was actually dead. And I think that was kind of what that, like, that all entails. So I was like, oh, that's Gemma's fear. But what's kind of interesting with Gemma was kind of like, well, that's not my only, that's not my greatest fear. I was like, hmm, then what is your greatest fear? And then lo and behold, everything kind of plays out. And it's like, we see, um, it's like the moment Deacon got knocked out, I was like, what's up with that? I was like, oh, that's the other fits. I was like, the fits from the framework, but how did he escape the framework or something? I'm like, no, I was like, you idiot. It's the, it's the fear dimension. It's like, that's Gemma's greatest fear. Cause that was always her biggest concern. It's like, cause it was her, the scariest thing for her was knowing that. That that was possible for Fitz. That was kind of her biggest fear as well as Fitz is that that person he was inside of the framework. It's really him that that didn't just come out of nowhere. Just she changed like, oh, um, Ada did was change some circumstances around in a framework. And he became that terrible, the terrible doctor that he was. And I'm like, man, that sucks. And it's just like, man, that's because I'm like, man, it's so it's crazy because you have Fitz having to confront that. And, you know, that's his fear. Like I said, it's his fear, too. And it's like seeing himself do that. And he's like, oh, my God, like he's here trying to finish what he started with in humans. I'm like, oh, God, it's like Fitz has to face himself. But it didn't click in my head until Jim was like, something's not right. And I'm like, no, you're not telling me. Turns out to be the case. Freaking Fitz is basically crazy like his mind split that basically at that time he was basically being two people at the same time he was being the fits from the framework as well as being himself i'm like that's crazy dude i was like did a fear dimension do that to him and then you had that situation of Gemma explaining it later on because she's like oh yeah i remember your injury made it so like you saw me for such a long time and it's like oh now he's seeing like his evil self from the framework which I'm not 100% remembering what the injury was. Wasn't it the whole thing that, you know, obviously at the end of, near the end of season one, the situation that Fitz and Gemma was in, like obviously it messed with him throughout season two. He couldn't really be kind of on top of things. Is it stemming from that or was it something else? Because I do remember the whole situation where Gemma was talking about like he was seeing her all over the place. But I don't really remember what the circumstances were around that. If you were, if you do know, let me know in the comments down below. I might end up looking up myself because I, I remember those circumstances. I remember him seeing her everywhere. I don't remember what the cause for that was. Because I think it was, that was around the time him and Mac became friends. I know, that, like I said, because I get the feeling like that was around the time that whole situation. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it, but I, I think that was kind of what that all stemmed from that same situation. Like, his brain kind of being messed up because of what Ward did to him and Gemma in that situation, kind of dropping them in the middle of that ocean like that. That whole situation, his brain being deprived of oxygen for such a long time. But nevertheless, uh, it's crazy because basically his mind kind of fractured because it's like, okay, I need to close this fear dimension thing because if I don't, it's going to spread it everywhere. And just his psyche being broken like that and just because even he's kind of like, what do I do? He's like, I can't apologize to Daisy for what I did or Mac because it doesn't matter. I did that. I can't blame it on someone else. It's because that darkness exists in me. That's a part of me. We can't say it wasn't. This wasn't just some hallucination pushing me. That's That was just me pushing myself, you know, which is so sad because obviously something's kind of broken with Fitz right now for him to go to such extremes, but it's because in his mind, he thought it was kind of like the right thing to do because it was necessary to close the um, fear dimension. But for him, it was kind of like casting it aside. Like it was that darkness in him that kind of created the doctor in the um, framework. It just being like what we need to do to get the job done. Because what did the doctor do? Everything he did in that world was for the purposes of keeping humanity alive. And it's like doing this to Daisy, like removing that um, inhibitor from her would mean being able to like use her powers to get the... Um, gravitonium to the way they need to to in the device so they can shut down the fear dimension and it's just 
that's a very complicated situation because it's like, you know, you even have Fitz drowning in it himself because he's like, I don't deserve their forgiveness. Because even Daisy was like, I'll never forgive you for this. And he's like, yeah, you won't be the only one. It's that situation of like, it's it's hard to say like what really happened. I guess just because he was at the last of his limbs and like he doesn't know when that fear dimension is going to break open because the next time it breaks open, there's no like stopping it. So we need to find a permanent solution now because of while the temporary one is holding. So it's, he was stressed about that, just everything. The way he makes it sound like, like ever since coming back from the framework, it's been a fear. It's been there in the back of his head. It's been a worry of his, but it's only like recently that he started seeing uh, this other fits, so he's probably just kind of been pushing it away, you know, so, because he's been so focused on everything else, he just kind of, like, drove himself insane to the point, it's like, he knew what needed to be done, so he went about it a different way, like, it was his, it was his brain kind of telling him, it was like, no, this is the solution, you know it's the solution, and you're just not willing to see it, because you're letting, like, your emotions and all your ties to these people prevent you from doing what you need to do. And that was with Daisy, which the, the heaviness behind that is because for Daisy, it, it broke her too, because it's like, that was the only thing that kept her for sure knowing like, okay, she was already scared about coming back to the present because she knows that she's going to be the one to destroy the world, which obviously I still have reservations about. Everyone still has reservations about, but for her, it's like, no, no, no. As long as I have this inhibitor, I don't have to worry about it. I can get on the front lines. As long as I don't have my powers, it's all good. I knew something was going to happen. I thought it'd be a decision of her own to get her powers back, but it's like that decision was taken from her, which is kind of a thing in itself. But it's also because like that was her only hope because she, now that she has her powers back, she's like, I don't, I don't know. Like if I had, didn't, have my powers that means we made it we made it possible to change history and now i don't have to worry about me blowing up the world or anything like that as long as i didn't have my powers but now that she does she's probably afraid that in every corner if she ever uses them again like she has to probably control herself because something something could and will eventually set her off to the point that she destroys the world and something i kind of i, I don't know why it didn't click in my head before and i was like how does infinity war play into all of this because i mean i would assume it would because infinity war is going to be a big thing and i, I would assume the show is going i doubt it's going to be done by the time infinity war comes out it might be but i'm pretty sure you know because like infinity war is literally like a month away a little more than a month away so i kind of get the feeling like it won't be done by then but you know so i'm curious obviously like the mcu kind of like these kind of reference like the mcu movies in a sense of like like i it's something i brought up in a video i recorded today like for example like reyna referencing ultron like oh all these mechanical men attacking and then like at the end of one episode and then literally in the next episode it's like oh yeah agents of, um uh avengers 2 happened and it was settled that's kind of and obviously was that last season no not last might have been last season i don't remember uh Either season three or four, might have been season three uh, when uh, Civil War happened. Yeah, you get what I'm trying to make. So the point I'm trying to make. So I'm curious to see what effects Infinity War are going to have. Because I don't know why it didn't click in my head. It's like, right, Thanos is literally trying to destroy half the universe. So it's kind of like, maybe he's the reason why the Earth got split. I mean, to be fair, that didn't come up in conversation because obviously they didn't want to get too much into that. Obviously, there's a division between the TV shows and the movies, and that's a whole thing, but it still plays an impact. So the future wasn't impacted by like what went down in Infinity War because obviously that takes place like almost a century after the events of Infinity War, essentially. So I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot to kind of think about. So it's just kind of interesting to see what they do about it. Because obviously because they're fiddling a lot around with this whole timeline situation, you could also make the argument that Infinity War it's kind of a separate thing. I mean, they're kind of back in present time and everything. You know, it's 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 a whole it's a whole thing. So and that's kind of the question I brought up in that video I recorded today was like where does that leave us with like this whole situation? What effects will kind of happen from it? That's something we'll have to wait for. Wait, you know, until post uh, Infinity War to kind of see what happens. But nevertheless, but obviously, I'm um, getting back to it because uh, this situation sucks too. Because obviously, like Mac and Fitz are good buddies, but it's like Fitz snapped. And not only did the robots he programmed shoot me, they also tried to come for Yo-Yo. Then you have the whole conversation about Yo-Yo and Mac, too, because it's like, well, because it's like for them, it's like she's tired of him treating her like a baby. But it's like he's trying to do everything. He wants to protect her. And Yo-Yo brought up something that's kind of like disheartening. It's kind of very bleak in a, a sense. As for her, it's like you already know I survive up to now, like up to a certain point in time, because obviously I was in the future. So obviously I live up to that point. To be fair, that yo-yo talked about the fact is that they that she would die and they bring her back like they did um, Tess. So 
there's that old situation. But for Mac, it's like, well, because we're trying to change time and everything, who's to say that, you know, things won't be different and you end up dying? So, which she looks at it like, if I die, that means we're making changes to the timeline. So, I just, I don't know. I feel like Yo-Yo isn't necessarily herself. I mean, because for one, she just feels useless. She's trying to hurry up and get those arms working and connected to her nurse so she can be of use. Because she wants to fight. She wants to be helpful because she feels like she's just sitting on a sideline while everyone protects her. She's like, I'm not helpless. I'm an agent just like all of you. Stop treating me like I'm not. It's just, obviously, they're worried and they care about her. And it's like, we're a family and we're going to always strive to protect each other. Like, when one of us is down, like, we're going to do everything we can to protect that person, you know? So, but at the same time, you can see how that can feel a little demeaning, especially to someone like Yo-Yo, who's so used to kind of handling things on her own. Like, you know, it's like she can always rely on, like, you know, not only on others, but also herself. And, you know, that just, that kind of turns into a whole thing. It, it's, a, it's a pride thing, too, you know. But um, the other thing I was going to talk about is, like, what this means for um, Gemma, because this is probably the hardest thing, like, seeing the man that she loves, like, torn apart like that, lost. And you even have Deacon talking to her, and he makes her realize, like, holy shit, you're my, you're my grandson, because she, he talks about all these things that her, that his mom would talk about her dad about. It's like, oh, how much of a brilliant and amazing man he was. And he, basically, Deacon's like, the fact of the matter is, if my mom talks about dad like that, her dad like that, it means that you find a way that some shape or form, like you are able to bring him back because you are the one person that knows fits even better than he knows himself. Even if he's lost, you will find a way to him. And because no matter what happens between these two, no matter how much they've gotten separated over the series, they always find their way back to each other. And so, and obviously I love that when upon Gemma finding out, realizing it, you see her throwing up, which immediately can be like, Oh, so I can only assume that's morning sickness, which means that you are in fact pregnant. Because I, I was wondering how that was going to play out going forward. Because I was like, huh? I like because I'm sure Deke could also probably be worried because it's like, well, my existence kind of at you know, you guys aren't being together. I thought that might be something that plays into it. He's like, well, I need you two to kind of get together again because it's like I need to make sure your relationship kind of gets fixed because it's like, well, I'm your grandson, so you know, I need y'all to make sure that I still exist. But then it's like, no, nope, his his mom. Is already um, there inside of a gym now. Like I get, you know, like I said, that's the only way I can interpret like, her throwing up like that. So, which is crazy too, because the rest of the team doesn't know, in particular, um, Colson nor um, May know about the situation back at base with the whole uh, Fitz situation. So. Which, speaking of Colson's situation, they captured Hale, which even off from the beginning was like, yeah, you can tell that's super a trap. But what's kind of interesting is Hale's perspective. Her whole thing is like, oh, we're trying to save the world. There's something greater and evil coming that we're trying to save the world from. Essentially, doing what S.H.I.E.L.D. does, which is kind of interesting. Because I, I still can't tell whether they really think they're the good guys or not. Because it's like, obviously, like, every turn is kind of like, oh, no, like, how can you prove this? Like, everything that went down with the LMDs and stuff like that, that, um, oh, it wasn't Daisy that shot Talbot and that, that all of this was some giant conspiracy by, like, the LMD, you know, Ada and everything. And that a framework, there's, like, no proof of that left. Turns out she's actually working with Anton. I mean, it seems like Anton's more like muscle that she forces along with them because they, because it's like, oh, she must have you by the balls. It's like actually by a brain in a jar. So his original brain, because obviously there's the whole thing about like, oh, he can build all these bodies and stuff like that. But his his initial brain is like if that dies, well, the rest, all the other like robots die so because he ended up pointing out something too that i thought was kind of interesting and i can only assume this is anton's last body because like colson pointed out all the other robots don't have faces right because ida's not around anymore or is it ada i think i already said ada but i think it might be ida. i don't remember nevertheless it's like because she's not around anymore uh, you can't actually make any more LMDs. That's why they don't have any faces. They wear the mask and everything like that. Because they're meant to just be soldiers, but they can't do the infiltration like he would want them to because the LMD technology died with you know, Ada. So it's kind of interesting because Colson decided to go with Hell 
because and then I had a whole conversation with May. May's like, really? It seems like lately you were on a suicide mission because I, you know, because Colson's still in that rain like that. He says he's not willing to just rush towards death, but it's like you're willing to sacrifice your life because out of anyone else's life, yours has the least meaning because you're like, I'm going to die anyway. So and still telling everyone, do not bring me back. But like I said, we see what May and Daisy are up to. So that still is in a wheelhouse of being a thing, even against his wishes, which is kind of the whole reason why he came back in the first place was because it was against his wishes he was like let me die but you know nick was like nah i can't let you die like there's still there's still a battle out there for colson to fight which luckily for him he did let colson live because he did bring colson back because all the stuff that's going down they needed colson to lead a team to kind of do all that so so may reluctantly lets him go but the thing is like they don't know about colson dying so i think that's kind of interesting i would have assumed like anton or something would have been able to do a scan obviously he was more concerned about scanning um colson's hand but i guess unless you really go out of your way to really scan him his biometrics and stuff like that you really wouldn't realize or even know it but um it's kind of interesting I find out like what Hale's ultimate plan is because she is talking about fighting some. So it's I wonder do they know about the evil that like well the whole situation in the future the Earth being destroyed is that what they're fighting against or is there something else entirely? Um, because obviously like I, well, last episode we ended up learning more about like this whole Hydra situation of like they're not Hydra but they're not going to work with Shield either because they're like oh Hydra and Shield kind of had it wrong we're going to go our own way it seems like they are a subsection of Hydra it seems like their name is the Confederacy um the, the group that Hill is part like grouped up with might be that or it might just be the entire group itself is named that, or, or either that or it's just the leaders that she were either way um so it is a situation of trying to save the world, just kind of going about it a different way than S.H.I.E.L.D. or HYDRA, but kind of leaning more towards the HYDRA aspect. So the whole point of them go and going with them is to kind of understand everything, which hopefully the next episode kind of gives us give us a clearer picture of well, what the hell is going on, what the, what battle are they fighting, considering the fact is that Coulson and them are trying to do the same thing. But if they brought out the whole time traveling thing, it's not like they would listen or believe them because everyone else would just think they're crazy. So everyone else thinks they're would think they're crazy. So why would the enemy think any different? So. I'm curious to figure that all out. But what I thought was kind of interesting is the guy at the end, um, I don't know, I don't remember the actor's name, but he's the actor. Most recently he played um Lemuel on uh, Midnight Texas. He hands Hell a device. It seems like it's the same thing that Caius had. Uh basically that souped up that other dude and Caius himself, that that black stuff that just kind of makes you go all like roided out angry super strong thing like it seems like that was what he gave her because it's kind of supposed to be like a last result thing in case you fail so which makes me wonder is that how uh, kasai has got that is it because of these people like he eventually gets it from them like like i said we know still know a lot of the stuff leading up to like the kree and everything happening here on earth but if we don't know the every single detail of what led up to that point. So, like I said, hopefully this episode we get to finally understand what everything's about. Because like not everyone here has a clear picture because they still see S.H.I.E.L.D. as an enemy. And that's why I was kind of bringing up earlier. Like, do they really believe that S.H.I.E.L.D. is lying about everything? It's like, oh, they're trying to cover their tracks. Because it's like, oh, show us proof. So, is everyone associated with this whole Confederacy, like, Hydra thing? Or is it just Hell and the people she's with? I, I don't, I don't know. I wonder if she'd been lied to this entire time, too. But, like I said, more stuff we just kind of have to wait to see and get answers to. But, really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love, lie to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.